today we are going to see about a debugging tool called tracer it is a very very important debugging tool to trace events for example if you are facing any error or if your or if your application is not going in the specified path or in any such case you need to use the debugging tool called tracer so all you need to do is whenever you are running your application flow you can click on this tracer icon either when you are in dev studio or app studio or in portals so once you click on this there are different items or tabs available here so basically this is you can pause and play this is you can clear all these events each event will come as a row coming to breakpoint you can keep specific breakpoint so once that breakpoint is hit then the tracer will stop at that point until you press play again or it will wait for one hour before it automatically resumes watch is used for watch variables say for you can watch the specific variable whenever that variable value is changing when your application or case is running at that time the case process will stop and tracer form will be highlighted you can see when that property value is changing remote tracer is you can use you can trace another requester session remotely so this is your current requester session this this is this one likewise each requester session has a unique id so from this requester session as you can see here this and this will be same because these both belong to the same operator id requester session with the same operator id also if you open, log in into the same prpc server from another browser or through incognito then for the same operator id also another requester id will be created so every one in the system will have unique requester id requester session each operator will have a requester session your queue processor job scheduler e even your service everything will have a unique requester session created in the back end so for you if you if you are in the this requester session and you want to trace remotely some other requester session maybe some agent or uh, a, a queue processor requester session or job scheduler requester person session you can do that by using remote tracer earlier in system management application sma also you can do the same you can delay the requester session which you want to access and from you can select the requester access session and trace it remotely now from latest pega 8 versions onwards you have admin studio so there directly you can go to your agent or job scheduler and you can do, do tracing from there so this save is used when you want to save this result in the form of an xml so and if if you want to share it to the gcs team so that they can provide resolution for you so this is these are all the basics so coming to settings tab so here you have multiple settings like what events you want to trace say for example if you are getting lot of data then you can uncheck say for example your focus is on some of the activities then you can uncheck data transform or you are, you are debugging a specific data transform then you can uncheck activities so when rules uh, so th these are exceptions these are break conditions when you when an expression exception is there you stop it pause it break it then you have to select break exceptions general options like you want to uh, local variables if you want to see or not expand java pages so these are all the all are the different uh, event types db query decision data flow for uh, section related rules if you want to trace you need to select stream rules unit test case rules queue processors so these all are the which events you want to can select if all the events are selected then it will take lot of time tracer is a memory resource intensive debugging process so you have to select only the ones which you want coming to rule sets also if you select all pega rule sets if you will get 1000 rows many rows and it will give lot of chaos for you to view it will be very convoluted for you so you deselect all your applications and try to select the rule sets 
for the application in which you made code changes or you are working or in your current application so and also your private edit if you have any private edit so this will come under the private edit rule set so so i have selected my application rule sets so now if i press play and if i say create a case then we will see what all events are going to come in the tracer so whatever prpc rules will be executed those will not come because we have selected only our application rule sets so from our application like poi default data transform is one which we know that it will be executed whenever a new cache type is created so that will be there from our layer like like uh, earlier poi start case used to be there now it is not there from pega 8.4 onward because of create stage as the first stage so if you see the lot of time it is taking why as you can see here here it has already loaded okay so now it has loaded completely now we can see in the, from our application not the odb rules what all rules are created or triggered or executed when we try to launch a new case so i will click on these rules like this is data transform like uh, so i have now we will see what are those rules so as you can see each one is a step this is one step one step so first prpc is calling this rule next these all are executed some so as you can see py default as the name says default it is a default rule which runs by default automatically it is calling another data transform py set field defaults so we are setting some field values here like this so these two data transforms are executed from our layer so you can click here this hyperlink to open the rule because that is the pj dns key so you can click here to know about uh, here or here anywhere you can click to know about the status or what is the event key which is a rule that is being executed using this key you can also open the rule in the dev studio so coming to parameter page when you click on unnamed you can view the parameter page values available in parameter page in that step context see here it is not opening because of pop up blocker software here you have to select this and manage so you, you have to select allow pop up blocker always so now let us try so i will click on any step unnamed c now this is the parameter way of course now it is not having any values this is the primary page or the so for a primary page for work objects is nothing but the py work page these are all are these are all the properties that are available in the py work page so you can click here so again in this step what is what are the property values in this step what are the property values for example you are here what are the different property values before this step execute is executed this property value will not be 10 for example in py set d field defaults we are setting dot customer id dot py label as empty so if you see that property will might not be there here so when it is executed then only that property will come into picture so we, we can verify such things say for example i will click here so i will search for px urgency so it is step because it is a first step right in first step only we are assigning so we are assigning that px urgency work class so there are some properties which are many properties so if you can see here if you go like this see here also many properties are there but in our dt we are not setting right from where they are coming that is an important interview question as you can see there is a checkbox called call super class data transform you click here it will go to the higher classes parent classes and check if there is any other data transform with the same name then it will try to execute this so whenever this data transform is opened 
uh, you watch my previous video on call super clash data transform so again it will open that so like that it keeps on going till at the rate base class so it executes all these properties so that's why we are getting all these properties next it will execute this next again it will come to our actual class so this is the tracer view now we will see for example before uh, we, are, we are calling previous set field defaults here only i will see some property which i am setting in the previous set field defaults maybe customer id so if you see customer id itself is not there but say if i see in the last step where py uh, set field defaults is ending see customer id dot py, uh, py label we are setting empty right so that is created that page structure is created object is created that is a benefit so we can see what is happening in granular level micro level at each step what is having action and action begin action end means that dt step start and end so if you see this is this is the data transform begin which data transform this data transform it by default step 1 start step 1 end step uh, step 2 start now it is calling another data transform which is py set field defaults it has six steps right see you can see here data transform begin step so here it is showing two as you can see here first one is commented right so nothing to execute so say step 2 directly is starting from step 2 step 2 start step 2 end step 3 start end 4 start end 5 start end 6 start end after step 6 end over that's all next data transform also end so data transform begins step 1 execution starts step 1 execution ends step 2 execution starts step 2 execution ends as step 1 is comment comment means it will not, nothing right in, even in java code if you write comment symbol it is it will be ignored by the compiler it will not be executed that's why it is not showing step 1 here so like by step 6 start and step 6 end after that data transform end so again now control will resume to the calling data transform it is like from first data transform you are calling this new uh, child data transform child ends control will resume back to the parent data transform similar to call activity it's like calling a nested function once the nested function execution is completed then it will control will resume to the parent function again data transform here so th this is the scenario logic here so you can see the step status as well good means it is good say if you are if it is fails anywhere then you will get fail so uh, you are doing some error handling then even though then, then it will not show any fail status it will not stop abruptly so if you see whenever it is first fail it is coming then it will show in red color so once that it is failed some if some error message is set into that work page then the color of the page step page will be shown in orange color so this is the step page context this is the px method status this is the rule type which is being executed this is the rule name this is the event number requester session number you can open that particular step as i have shown earlier to view the detailed error what is the reason for fail so we can invest application errors using a tracer tool click anywhere within the event row to view the details of the event so uh, click the rule name in the name column to open the rule in the dev studio these are the hyperlinks this is a rule set so earlier we have traced some execution of a case so primary page is py work page here primary page is py landing page maybe someone has traced this from the landing page in the studio so in the this is header bar as i have already told you we can pause and play the tracer button by using this so if you say for example if you want to trace something in the third section in your case don't start the tracer in the first section itself it's like you are uh, you will take more time to load it is a performance impact 
it's a tracer will utilize lot of resources and also tracer has maximum 5000 events set by default so you can pass this trace open this tracer pass this tracer run this run the case till the third section where you are getting an issue so before loading of the third section so that is before pressing submit button in the second section then you can play this tracer and you can go to the uh, third section this clear so clear is you can all the logged events you can clear so as i have told you save button is used to save an xml file of all the record settings button you can select the rule says break conditions break points identify when to stop execution once the replication reaches an inactivity you can keep watch value on some property variables remote tracer to trace remotely other requester sessions important interview questions 